podcast. All right, here we go. Amen. Exodus 15 and verse 23 it will be my text tonight, but David will be reading for me. Exodus 15, 23 through 27. Amen. Exodus is in the beginning of your Bible. Second book. Second book. That's right. You can't miss it. Right there. Exodus 15 and verse 23. When you got to say amen. 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 Let's read it, Brother David. And when they came to Mara, 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 they could not drink of the waters of Mara, mm-hmm. for they were bitter. They were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. Uh huh. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and, and the Lord chewed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. Right. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and yes. there he proved them, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these plagues, plagues, right? the which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And they came to Elam, where where were twelve wells of water and three score and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much for standing in honor of the word of the Lord tonight. Amen. Why was it called Mara? I'm, I'm forming this as a question tonight. Why was it called Mara? And the scripture tells us the word Mara there means a bitter place in the desert. It means distasteful or distressing to the mind. It's accompanied by severe pain or suffering. Mara. It's a location. It is a place. Amen. Uh, Have you ever felt bitter before in your life? Amen. Have you ever felt like just everything that was coming your way was distressing or distasteful? Amen. Uh, It bothered you. Frustration comes with it. Stress comes with it. Sometimes it comes with pain. And suffering. Right. It just depends upon the situation. Everybody, every, everybody's situation is different. I understand that. But we've all been there. Yeah. We've all been to what may seem like a bitter place in the Amen. desert. Amen. And let me encourage you that uh, we all are going to experience that walking with God. Amen. As Christians, you're going to experience distasteful or distressing times. And you're living for God. Amen. Not always is your coming to church going to feel joyful. Right? Yes. Amen. 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 Not always are you going to feel just like I'm ready to dance. I'm ready to shout. I'm ready just to give my loudest holler that I can. Amen. 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 I, I'm ready to get behind the preaching. Right. Not always are you going to feel like that. Right. Amen. Amen. Sometimes Amen. you're going to wake up bitter, bothered, Amen. distressed. Amen. The mind is heavy on you. Your your body feels weak. Uh, you you're going through pain and suffering. The there's 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 stress in the family. There's awkwardness. Have you been ever been in an awkward situation? Amen. To where the awkwardness. Everybody's trying to get through it, but the whole room feels awkward. Right. 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 Amen. Let me tell you something. Three days prior to this in Exodus. They had just come out of the Red Sea. Right. They had just seen their enemies swallowed up in the waters of the Red Sea. Right. God had done all these miracles, and now it seems as if... Uh, am I on? Okay. Yeah, you're on. Here, try this one. Am I going in and out? Yeah, a little bit. All right. Cordless mics, I'll tell you. Corded mics. Corded. Right. All right, we'll try that one. And, and, and it seems like they, they just saw all the miracles. They saw all the plagues that God brought on their enemies. They seen these waters open up with a great wind. And the Bible says that after the waters closed up on their enemies, they all began to shout. Right. They were dancing. They were hitting tambourines. They were shouting unto the, unto the Lord, right. singing songs. Oh, man, it was a great time. Right. Three days later, they're mad. They're stressed out. They're... Hating Moses when three days prior they loved Moses. Right? They're like, I'm so glad I followed Moses. Man, had it not been for Moses, 
I was a little worried there at first because, you know, he made, he made all the work harder. Amen. We have to do more work because of him. Amen. Everything was fine until Moses showed up. And then Pharaoh made my workload harder. Right. Come on. Probably what some thought when we entered the Operation Tabernacle. Right. Amen. <laughs> Man, Pastor, you're making all of us work harder now. Amen. Amen. Listen, it wasn't Moses' fault. God sent Moses there for a reason and for a purpose. Amen. And then to deliver his people from all the bondage they had been in. He was taking them to a better place. Amen. Amen. And so when they got through and they saw their enemies swallowed up, they loved Moses that day. And they proved My God, they loved God. They loved Moses. And they loved their situation. But three days later, they were complaining. They were mad. They were bitter. They were distasteful. Because Moses, you brought us here to die. You brought me to a bitter place. Amen. Wow. That seems to be also... The talk or phrases of those that start coming to church and start experiencing the attacks of the enemy. Right. Amen. And when you start experiencing loss, Amen. Right. Come on. because the enemy will take things from you, Amen. and you're not going to like this, but also, so will God. Amen. The difference is, is that God will take things from you that you don't need, right. that I don't need. Amen. People that I don't need. Right. Situations I don't need. Right. Jobs I don't need. Right. Amen. And he Amen. wants me all to himself. He wants you all to himself. But when our emotions are attached to those things. Right. Right. When we've got a history and memories attached to those things. Right. And God begins to pull you away from all of that. Amen. It will be a distasteful or a distressful moment. In your mind. And people begin to say, I had it better in the world. That's right. Say that again. Right. Oh, yeah. And so, when people begin to talk and think like that, you're already starting to backslide. That's dangerous. Amen. Don't ever say that. You need to know there's good times. And bad times in the church. Amen. 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 That doesn't mean God isn't good. He's always good. Amen. Amen. Take your hands to that. He's always good. But you've got to know that I am not my own. He purchased me with his precious blood. And now that I've been born again, I belong to Jesus. Now it is my duty to serve him, not serve the world or myself. Right. Amen. Amen. That's good. Are you with me? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So they came to this place called Mara. Why was it called Mara? Because it was bitter. It was the distasteful time. Amen. They went three days in the wilderness with nothing to drink. Mm-hmm. Some of you go a couple hours with nothing to eat or drink and you are mad. Amen. Come on. Amen. Have you ever been there? Yeah. Amen. All of a sudden, yep. everybody you love is your enemy. Amen. They got a new word for it. It's called hangry. Yeah. You're hungry and angry at the same time. And then everybody becomes your enemy. And it's your fault because you got all these things going on. And then next thing you know, Pastor Luna calls and he wants you to go do this and this and this. And, and you were supposed to take me to eat. Amen. Amen. That's good. Amen. 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 And so now I'm bitter. I'm mad. And then Pastor Luna shows up and says, hey, how you doing? Bro. <laughs> Amen. So here were they at. Here were they. Nothing to drink. They're mad at Moses. Moses, you brought me here to die. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Let's look at the bright side of things. Number one. <laughs> they had water. Come on now, change from. Did I freeze it? I'm sorry. I forgot. There it is. They had water. But it was bitter. I remember growing up, my dad said, Go out and get you something out of that hose over there. Amen. 
There was no such thing as saying, Ugh. All right. I got a whooping. Amen. Nowadays, nobody drinks out of the water hose. Everybody thinks they're going to die. <laughs> drink out of the hose. Are you crazy? My dad would tell me, boy, you better drink out of that hose. <laughs> they used to convince us, I don't know how true it is, that because we played in the dirt more and drank water from the hose and the faucet, that we didn't get as sick as much as we do today. Because we were in the midst of bacteria. All up in it. Immune to it. Uh-huh. And never complain. Immune to it. That's right. And then thought it was good. But like, oh, man. Woo. And then if we said no, the response was, then you ain't thirsty. When mom and dad would cook and you didn't want that, you ain't hungry then. You must not be hungry. Anybody ever grew up in that era? You see, they already forgot three days ago what took place when they followed the man of God and when the man of God followed God. Just in three days, they forgot that God was leading them. Right. And if God brought them to the place or location of Mara, wouldn't the same God deliver them or do some miracle for them that, to, to help them through? Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. But why is it in three days they forgot God? Don't be so hard on them. Come on, we're angry. Amen. I've seen people shout on Sunday and Wednesday night they're backslid. That's right. Amen. 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 Right. Amen. Three days later, Amen. I'm not coming. Amen. I understand if you got to work. That's not what I'm talking about. Amen. But they had a God with them that could turn things around. Right. You know, I mean, could you imagine drinking out of that water? Stuff swimming around in there. Amen. We're just not thirsty enough anymore. <laughs> well, yeah, we're not living in the desert. Thank God. It's okay, I like drinking clean water. I'm not trying to make you drink dirty water. Amen. I just want you to look at the bright side of things. See, we've got to learn to be content with what we have. Amen. 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 Not always is God going to answer your prayer, bam, like that. Just shazam it to you. Anybody like shazam? I like shazam. Amen. Bam, get my answer right then and there. Listen, God's not a genie in a bottle. Amen. Whenever we find ourselves bitter, it seems to be that's when we want God to answer the fastest. Amen. We want God to come in and rescue us out of that situation. Just deliver us in a hurry. Amen. And get me through and answer me. And if he doesn't, I've got a problem. That's right. I've got a problem with that. My Lord Jesus. So, why was this place called Mara? We already answered that. It's a bitter place. There goes that drink of water. It's a bitter place. Therefore, it it made it a bitter time in their life. Are you with me? A bitter time. And so, when there's bitter times in your life, there are things that you deal with differently. Hello. Amen. When you're on a spiritual high, man, you, you, you do things differently. You say things differently. You, I mean, it, it's all in your, your, your persona, your attitude, and the way you carry yourself, your demeanor. It's all over you when you're in a good mood. And man, everybody can tell. Amen. Woo, Amen. They're in a good mood today. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I like it. Amen. But when I arrive at that place called Mara... You, you, you know what's amazing about this name that I formed it as a question? Why did they call it Mara? Because Mara is also known as a Hebrew name. They name people Mara. Yeah, that, 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 they literally named them after those things. And it becomes common. You see, the Jews would name people accordingly as to what they were dealing with at the time of birth. And that's how they would name their children. 
when the Ark of the Covenant was stolen, amen, and there was a woman who had a child, and the glory of God left, she named her child Ichabod, and Ichabod meaning the glory is gone. Amen. Poor child. Did you imagine growing up being named no glory? Yeah. Thanks a lot, Mom. Don't be so hard on her. We put blame on others in our family for how they make us feel. Amen. Amen. When you have the right to choose to drink that bitter cup that everyone else is drinking, or say, I don't want that. Amen. I'm not going to let that bitter stuff they're doing affect me. So when bitter times or places show up, can we identify what it is? The place of Mara made it a bitter time in their life. You see, to the Jews, whenever they left Egypt, to the Jews, they have stages or stages of life all the way into the promised land that they focus on. And the place of Mara is one of those stages that they really bring about and they teach lessons accordingly. Because we're going to have times that when it seems like I'm, I should be living in deliverance, I arrive at Mara. Yeah. Amen. It doesn't mean that God's deliverance is over. This is just a small trial in my journey. Small. Amen. A small trial. I can choose whether I'm going to make this a big deal or get through it. So can we identify when we are going through bitter times in our life? Amen. I'm crackling again. Amen. Because if not, then we should ask God or ourselves questions during prayer. Right. Amen. Too many times we are going through things that we can't even identify what's going on. Have you ever asked that to the Lord? Lord, what in the world is happening? Amen. What is going on here? Amen. I've been there before. And I've also preached that we should be sensitive enough to we should know what's going on. Right. We should at least get to the place where we know whether it's God or the enemy that's coming against us. Right. Amen. And that, that listen, it doesn't matter where you're at in God. That should, be some, that should be a goal you need to set. And all the trials that you go through, you should be able to, God, help me to identify what's happening here. Is this from you? Because if so, I'll praise you all the way through it. I'll trust you all the way through it. I won't ask no questions, and I'll be patient. Amen. But if this is of the enemy, then you've given me power to overcome this. Right. Right. Then I have the right to pray against this. Right. You see what I'm saying? So Amen. knowing this tells me how I need to act or respond. Amen. Right. That's good. That's good. In those moments, people are going to bother me. Right. And so now on top of my bitter location, I'm also bitter with somebody else. Because right. I'm affected by that. So now that stuff you're drinking, I just went and took a drink of it too. So now we're all bitter. Right. Come on. Amen. Are you seeing what I'm, where I'm going with this? Amen. Because we need to be, as apostolics, we need to be sensitive in the Holy Ghost. Right. Amen. If you got the Holy Ghost, you speak in tongues, amen, there ought to be a sensitivity that comes about you in your walk with God. Amen. amen. We ought to be able to know, Lord, this is your doing. Amen. Situation with the church that's happening with us, this is God's doing. Amen. Because we're in God's hands, Amen. And God has sent men to encourage us every step of the way. Amen. If we were wrong or we, or we were uh, in sin, then we would have we had judgment. Amen. But, but, but it really hasn't been that. Now, we've had correction through our trials. And correction is good. Amen. But I need to recognize where I'm at. And what's going on? How can I identify it? The problem in this generation is that when people get mad, upset, bitter, stressed out, they can't identify the problem. Amen. And they don't know how to deal with it. Jesus. So instead of focusing on what the actual issue is, we take it out on everyone and everything. Right. 
And then it shows up when I come to church because I can't even respond to God. And God is not the one that did that to you, yet we treat him as such. Well, this is good stuff right here, I'm telling you right now. And so we've got to get to the place where we can identify. I'm going to say that again. Identify. Identify. Is this God? Or is this the enemy? Amen. Come on. Amen. Let's keep going. Did I preach there? All right. So questions to ask in prayer. This to get your mind working and deciphering of what's going on. Number one, what's happening? What is happening here? What's really the issue? Number two, how do I feel? How is this thing making me feel right now? Amen. This is so important because when this generation comes to church and starts living for God, but has no knowledge of the word of God, your emotions lead you on how to feel. Right. Amen. And your emotions can deceive you, church. Amen. Amen. Your emotions lie to us. Right. All the time. Yeah, all the time. My mind takes the journey many times. I could be sitting here, but I'm way over there. And next thing you know, I'm playing out situations, memories, Amen. pains and hurts. Yep, sure does. What they said and what I should have said. Amen. How they did this and how I should have did that. Amen. And it works yourself all up. Come on, y'all heard this before. Amen. Amen. And so how do I feel? See, if I don't know the word of God, I'm not going to know how I'm allowed to feel by God. Right. And, and we can all testify that at the moment of anger and bitterness, when that rises up, that tends to take control. That tends to take preeminence and we respond accordingly. We all have done that. We've all done that. Now, I'm not putting that down. I'm trying to, by the Holy Ghost, help us to uh, have an understanding of what takes place with us. Amen. Amen. I know that this is God's doing. Therefore, I have received messages to encourage us and not get on to us. Amen. 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 Thank God. Thank God. Had I had not known, I'd be like, man, church, I don't know. <laughs> Let's try this. Let's try here. <laughs> Let's try Psalms today. I don't know. <laughs> we can't do that. We cannot go along in our life just letting the wind carry us wherever it feels like taking us. Right. You know, God has a direction for us. Amen. He has a purpose for us. Amen. And He has a purpose for each and every one of your individual lives. And so, Come on. All right. I, I think about vulnerable situations that take place. Sicknesses that's happened. Amen. Especially here lately, I noticed that none of us rebuked Satan. Right? Right? Amen. Not that we needed to. But rather, I think we all felt a need to trust God. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Because I didn't feel like Satan was attacking. He can't attack right now. We, 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 we might look, not look the greatest right now, but Satan sees the strength of the church. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. You want to know where he's attacking is where people want to give up. Right. Amen. But not where everybody's fasting and praying and right. seeking God. Right. Amen. And posting good things and saying, hey, I'm trusting in God here. I'm believing God here. I'm going to church anyway. I'm going to pray anyway. And I'm trusting God. I'm believing God. Amen. And so we didn't have to rebuke Satan because we know that God's hand is on this. Right. Amen. 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 Good. And so do you see the difference? It helps me believe God. So I can't tell myself to be scared because I know it's in God's hands. Amen. So I can't let fear get a hold of me because God didn't give me fear. Amen. Do you see the knowledge of the word uh, of the word of God working in my speech? Amen. When it works in my speech, then it works in my emotions, church. Right. And it tells me how I should feel. There have been times in my living for God. That had it not been for my knowledge of the word of God, I would have turned my back on some people. Amen. I would have quit some things. 
Because my emotions convinced me that they were lying, that they were against me, that this was this, this was that. You ever been there? But the word of God said, I'm not allowed to be that way. I'm not allowed to talk like that. God wouldn't turn me against my pastor. Amen. Amen. God wouldn't do that. And so when I feel emotions of that, and you will. Right. I'm going to tell you right now, you will. Amen. Not because I'm, I'm trying to intimidate or provoke. Amen. By no means. But preaching will bother you sometimes. Amen. 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 It's the word of God. It's the unadulterated word. It's never going to line up with this flesh. Amen. 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 But when I have knowledge and understanding of what it says, then I can tell the flesh how to feel. Amen. 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 So how do I feel? What does the word of God say? What is the answer or solution to the problem? Right. If the people would have just came to Moses and said, Moses, there's bitter waters here. What do we do? He would have said, hold on. Good question. Lord. 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 Amen. 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 When people come up to you and say, hey, what's going on with you? Or or when the enemy comes and uses people. Amen. Hey, I thought you were going to church. What's going on? Mm. Hey, that's a good question. Let me ask Jesus. Amen. Wow. That's it. All right. <laughs> that's good. See, I'm trusting God. Amen. Amen. Well, did he answer you? When he does, I'll let you know. Amen. In the meantime, I'm going to wait. Amen. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait on you, Jesus. Amen. We sing it all the time. I'm going to wait on you, Jesus. Amen. Sometimes you just got to wait on the Lord. Amen. So Moses prayed and the Lord told him what to do. We'll get that tree over there. Chunk it in the water. Amen. Notice Moses didn't go. (laughs) Here he goes again. Telling me to do this crazy stuff. And some of you have seen it. I'll challenge you. Hey, come up here and shout. Amen. Come up here and speak in tongues. Come up here and dance. Come up here. You know what? Run, Run the aisles. Run around the church if we're able to. You know what? Scream and shout. Yell glory. Do something crazy. And then why is that? Because it's a step of faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. And Moses grabbed the tree, chucked it in the bitter waters, and the water became sweet. There was the answer to the problem. They they could have saved themselves a whole lot of stress, a whole lot of complaining, a whole lot of betrayal if they would have just waited. Amen. Waited on the problem? No, not wait on the problem. Wait on the answer. Don't you think God has an answer to every problem we go through? Amen. I'm not going fast tonight. I'm trying to help us. Amen. Amen. God has an answer to every problem we face. And many times I think we want him to send thunder and lightning and shake us all up before we, it's revealed to us. Right. When really it's already written in the word of God. Amen. Amen. It's already been there. It's been there before I got here. Amen. It's been there before I was born. Amen. But the problem with reading the word of God today is that it's too boring for people. Right. Amen. Now you can gain a decent knowledge from movies. Woo. Right. Amen. And you can get a basic understanding of some stories. But let me tell you something. There's some knowledge that's in that word that you're only going to find if you pick it up and read it. Amen. You've got to have a time of devotion. Amen. Why? Because people are going to bother you. Amen. That's right. All the time. Somebody say all the time. All the time. You know it. Amen. And don't think that by going to the world... That's going to be better. I don't understand. I've heard people say, you know what, I, I'm just, I, I, I can't be in church anymore because, Pastor, you don't understand, people just bother me. Right. But so they leave the church to go to worldly people. Right. <laughs> so really, is, that, is, is it people that bother you or just church people bother you? Amen. You see, here, here's the thing with church people. We're all trying to change. Amen. Right. You wouldn't be here if you weren't trying to change. And sometimes when my change doesn't quite work when I want it to, because there's no button for me to push on that change. Hello? 
Amen. It makes me frustrated. Right. And so when I am frustrated and I come across someone else who's trying to change and they're frustrated, we're going to bump heads. That doesn't mean that my, oh my God, my worldly friends are better than they are, or my worldly family is better than they are. No, it doesn't. Amen. My church family never cursed me out. My church family, amen, ain't never stabbed me in my back. Amen. No, 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 no. The ones that, that treat me right, that's the church. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? Come on. Well, I've had that happen to me in the church. Well, they didn't have the Holy Ghost that time. Quit blaming the church. Amen. Amen. Isn't it amazing how one incident in the church, they blame the whole church? Right. It's the whole church's fault. And Jesus. <laughs> that sounds like bitter waters to me. Amen. They're drinking that poison stuff. And I don't mean liquor. Amen. That's worse. That's worse. Anybody ever been there? I know this is not popular to talk about. So what's going on? Identify the problem. People get mad today and say, hey, what do you matter? I, 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 I don't even know. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, that's good. Well, can, can you explain how you feel? I just feel some type of way. Here we go. Come on. Well, what is one type of way? What is that? Amen. That seems to be a common phrase. I, you got me feeling some type of way. Well, what type of way? Come on. What type of way? See, that's, that, that, that's a phrase I'm finding from the younger generation. Amen. Because they can't explain how they feel. They weren't taught to, to communicate or express with words how they feel. And let, let me tell you something. This is, this is the problem with this newer generation. Because they struggle with that, then when it comes time to pray and communicate with words, we don't know what to tell God. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Good. And so that's why so many are struggling getting the Holy Ghost. Struggling when they come up in prayer, they don't even know what to say. Yeah. They, they feel to pray because they feel the power of the Holy Ghost upon them. And they'll cry and they'll, they'll lift their hands. Some will even tremble. But to get the words out is they're struggling. Why? Because they're in a bitter place and they haven't learned to communicate and identify what's going on. Right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And so what do I do? What do I do as a man of God? I, the only thing that God tells me to do, I can only offer you the tree of life. Amen. The same tree that Moses threw into the bitter waters, that tree is Jesus Christ today. Right. Amen. The tree of life. And if you'll go to him and talk to him about it, haven't you ever heard that phrase? Just a little talk with Jesus. Amen. Make it right. But, but we're not talking to him. Amen. Amen. That's the key there. So if I'm going to identify what's going on, know how to feel, hello, Amen. Amen. I've got to learn to communicate these things to God if I'm ever going to help somebody else. Amen. That's why so many struggle helping each other. So think about it. What, what exactly is bothering you? Don't let that bitter stuff get you. Don't let it make you bitter. Bitter. I said bitter. <laughs> Who is bothering you? Is it something they actually did to you or their personality kind of bothers you? You see, because sometimes they didn't do anything to you. But just because you don't quite click, then I'm bothered. And you know what? I don't even like you. Come on. That's good. Right? Personality. Come on. So you see, they, and, and really, they're trying, remember, they're trying to change too. Amen. Not everybody's supposed to be like you. Amen. Isn't that right? You ought to be thankful. You ought to be thankful. You probably wouldn't get along with you. <laughs> Imagine that. So sometimes it's not that someone actually offended us. It's their personality is opposite of me. Amen. It's different from me. Amen. And so their, their upbringing is a little different from me. That don't mean we can't get along. Right. That don't mean we don't have things in common. Right. I'm just allowing that to be my bitterness. Right. 
Allow. Amen. That's good. Amen. And so that, look, 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 this is what happens. When personalities bother, bother people, not all the time, but many times. Mm-hmm. When personalities bother, bother people, we think they owe us an apology. Amen. Right? They're just being themselves. Amen. And many times they don't even know that they offended you. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. See, when you're bitter, you allow those things to bother you. Right. Amen. Amen. When you're drinking bitter waters, man, it's amazing what, what, what will stir you up. Just like that cup that guy was drinking. See all those little things in there? There was a whole bunch of things in there that's poisonous or bad. Amen. Amen. When you're drinking that bitter stuff, it's going to bother you. It's going to make you sick. That's right. Amen. Amen. Have you ever watched somebody eat something you don't like and it bothers you? <laughs> You're like, how do you eat that? And, and, and your, your face is all disfigured. You, you ain't tasting nothing, but you're all. <laughs> or maybe the way somebody chews. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Ooh, our mannerisms are different. They're being sincere. They're just nourishing. And you're over there disgusted. Mm. Everything about you gets on my nerves. I hope that's not in the marriages. <laughs> Amen. But, but you see what I'm saying? Now, if someone offended you, then they're wrong. They need to apologize. But many times, if we're allowing this bitter time, this bitter place, this bitter situation get the best of me, then their personality is affecting me, and and it doesn't click with me, and then we'll tend to get bothered or allow the other person to make us bitter too, and this is not good, and now we're both bitter at each other. We can never grow like that. We can never love one another like that. I mean, think about it. Just three days ago, we had a shouting, powerful service, and people were speaking in tongues, falling out, man. Whoa! Thank you, Jesus. We have, we've got miracles happening. Amen? we got miracles happening. People coming out of the hospital. Thank you, Jesus. All by the power of God. And so, those are the things I've got to remember and hold dear to me. Right? Amen. Because once you leave and the miracle's done and it's over, you're like, yes, thank you, Jesus. And you go home and everything ain't right at home. Amen. 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 I just got a new job. Thank you, Jesus. Just got a raise. Thank you, Jesus. Everything's looking up. Amen. You, you, you got six checks already counted for. You ain't even got yet. Amen. You thinking down the road. Yes, yes. Amen. We're, we're going we're gonna to live it up. We're going to do a bid. Go to a restaurant. To Brazil. Amen. I know when I get paid, the first thing I want to do is go eat. It's bad when all you do. maybe it's just because I'm old. I don't all just think about food. Amen. But when when you can't identify, then we don't know how to feel. <laughs> pastor, this, this is this is elementary, Pastor. That's how we act sometimes. That's <laughs> good. How do I feel? Do I feel joyful? Right. Do I got that sad look on my face? Right. Come on. I, you know what's funny? Is that even if I were to tick the names off, you could tell that one is sad. Come on. Right. Good. You can tell that one is scared. You can tell that one is angry. And you can tell that one is bothered, disgusted, stressed. Probably a lot of things there. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that one alone. Uh-huh. And so, honestly, honestly, which one of these draws you the most? Joy. If someone's being angry, they're not going to draw you to God or draw you to their character. Amen. Amen. And so, if they're going through an anger time, I need to pray for them. I can't let their anger become mine. Amen. What's going on, brother? You okay? What's going on, sister? It'll be all right. God is good. Amen. Let's worship God. 
Amen. Or fear. Pastor, I'm so scared. I just don't know what to do. <laughs> We've all been there. I'm going to give you the scripture. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but power. How many know it? Power, love, and sound mind. Then why is my mind all in left field? Amen. Amen. You got to get the joy back in. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes when? In the morning. In the morning. You still wake up bitter? You didn't pray. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, you, you, I, I, I'm trying to be nice tonight, but you, you've got to talk to God about it. Amen. Ask yourself these questions. Write it down if you have to. You know, sometimes people come in and they're joking, but just because you've been bitter the last couple of days or bothered, then you begin to hate that person. Right? Amen. Every time they show up, you don't like that person. Come on. You can't be that way with them. Right. Amen. They're trying to be nice. They're trying to shake your hand. They're trying to, you know, hey, how you doing? What's going on? You know? But you mad. You bitter. You've been drinking that nasty water. And, uh, and so now when your brother and sister try to come and assist in which the scripture tells us to do, right? right? then we're not receiving the love of God that he uses in us. And so then people pray and say, well, Lord, I I felt all alone and you didn't send nobody to me. (laughs) Lord, all I wanted you to do is wrap your arms around me, but you didn't do so. Every sister's trying to. I'm better by myself. I just won't talk to nobody. Everybody's trying to talk to you, but you. Right. Amen. You got disgust right there. Amen. Amen. You see, if I know the word of God, then the word of God can counter my emotions right. and tell me how I'm supposed to feel. I may not like it at the moment, but at least I know that my emotions are not okay. And I think many times we know. I think many times we know. But we just don't want to confess. Amen. We don't want to confess. And the scripture says confession is good for the soul. It doesn't mean you got to go and confess your sins to me. But just admit, hey man, you know what? I, I need prayer. I need you to pray for me. I've been struggling a little bit. Can you help me out a little bit? Hey sister, I've been, I've been irritable lately. And, and it's not you. I think sometimes we need to tell each other that, you know something, brother, it, it's not you. I'm just, you know, I've been a little, I've been a little on edge lately. Amen. And I think if we were to just be real with ourselves and each other that way, we would overcome bitterness and bickerings amongst one another. Amen. We'd be a lot closer. Amen. Because it grieves me. God forbid, I don't ever want to hear it, but I've heard it. And it grieves me to hear people say that I don't feel close to the church. Right. Amen. Amen. That grieves me. Amen. Because I can't understand why someone would say that. I can't understand why they would feel that. Amen. You see, because that motion, that emotion that, that's talking to their mind is wrong. Amen. Amen. You know that's still the enemy. Right? right? Amen. You know that's the enemy, but why do we listen to it? Amen. See, I don't feel that way. I don't care how many times you've been mad at me. Amen. I know when you don't want to hear me preach. Amen. <laughs> I still love you. Amen. It's not going to change how I, I, I... I've been there sometimes when, when some of you did wrong. It didn't change how I felt about you. Amen. Amen. Because I loved you. And when I said I love you, I meant it. You know, because I had a revelation of God's jealousy and love, church. Amen. Some of you need to write that down. You need to get a revelation of God's jealousy and His love. Amen. Amen. Because when God is jealous for you and I, he doesn't want anyone else to have you. Because he loves you with a possessive type of love that you're mine. And I don't want you for nobody else. You understand what I'm saying? And when I can learn to get an understanding of his love towards, towards me and towards others, then that will be my motivation in my heart. Amen. See, fear and anger is not my motivation. Love is. Amen. Love is. I also under yeah the Bible says love covers the multitude of sin, but I also understand that when you use love as your primary motivation, you don't always get 
you, you, you usually get the short end of the stick. You don't get that much better. Amen. But I know, I know that I will receive more back from him Amen. rather than from people. Amen. 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 And that's my reward. Amen. That's my reward. To learn to love one another. I'm not, I'm not going real fast tonight. I'm trying to help us by the word of God because let, let me tell you something. This affects our faith. Amen. Remember Sunday's message that our faith would fail not. Amen. And one of the things that affects our faith many, many times is how we feel. And we get offended. We get bothered. We get bitter. Amen. And we don't know how to feel about it. We don't know what it exactly it is. We can't identify it. And, and, and we're not going through the steps. We don't transition before we go to a different location or place. You remember that message about transitioning? Right. When you get off from work and you're bothered, transition before you go home. Right. Pray before you enter. For you married couples, pray before you go and you see your wife, amen, or your, or your, or your husband. And remember that your bad day has nothing to do with them. Amen, amen. Amen. amen, because if not, I'll carry that bitterness towards them. If I feel like I've been struggling in my walk with God, in which it can happen in a marriage, amen. where amen. one feels good and the other one doesn't. Right. Amen. amen. It's difficult to not let the one who's struggling affect you. It's difficult. Amen. But that's when you've got to learn to be the one to strengthen and help. How can I help? What's going on? I see you bothered and, and I know it's not about me. Sometimes you have to tell yourself if they won't tell you. Mm-hmm. I know it ain't about me. Don't, let, don't take it personal. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Amen. Identify. Transition. What does the word of God tell you how to feel? And then express. Amen. Amen. Because when we can do this, church, we can be effective at praying. Let me, I, I got a revelation on prayer. Let me show you with you this. God doesn't want you to just be good at music, good at singing, good at preaching. If we can be good at praying, God will make us good at everything else. Amen. Amen. If we will get good at praying, God will make you good at whatever it is you seek to do for Him. That's good. Amen. But we're not good at praying. No. Amen. I'm glad we should have been had more amens on that one. We should have been had a whole bunch on that. Amen. Amen. And I know we can do good. And many of us know how, but we choose not to. We don't express it. So we, we got to feel it, so to speak. Right? Let me tell you something, that's for the Baptists. Because see, I walk by faith, not by sight. I walk by faith, not by emotion. I know that where two or three are gathered, hello, the word, then he is there in the midst. That means despite how I feel. Despite whether they're playing a good song or not. Come on, Sister Gucci. Amen. I know that he's here. And when I know that he's here, then all things are possible to them that believe. Right. Can we stand? Amen. That's good. Amen. Sometimes you got to pray first. Sometimes you have to ha- ask God to help you with, with my issues and my attitude and my mindset sometimes first before I can go and fix the other problem. Or deal with the situation at the job. Sometimes our jobs create a stress that it brings a bitter spirit about us. Amen. That doesn't make you wrong with God, so to speak, but it can make me wrong with one another. I've got to go back to the tree of life at that moment. And remember what Moses did, how he cast, he went to the tree, he went to God. You understand what I'm saying? The tree is a type of shadow of Jesus Christ. And the tree of life. And he went to that and he cast it into the waters. And the waters were made sweet. If we would trust in God. And give our situations. Give our needs. Give, give our worries. Our frustrations. Everything. And just give it to him. And learn how to communicate that better to him. Think about that. One of the most. One of the top three reasons marriages fail. Is because of communication. And this walk with God, it's a relationship. You want to know why it fails for so many? I dare to say communication is one of them. We've allowed something to make us bitter and it affected my communication with God. 
See, when, when you love God and you get this revelation, church, let me say it like this. When you first come to God, we seek for times of prayer. It's got to be the right time. It's got to be the right moment. It's, it's got to be the right place so I can pray. But when you grow and you fall in love with God and, and you understand that He hears you at all times, location, who's there, who's not there, it's never an issue. Because He hears me. He's there with you. He loves you. He's, he's waiting for you to speak to Him. It don't always have to be a long conversation. It's just you saying, Lord, I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you, Lord. I just... I just need you to listen just for a few moments, Lord. And oh, how he can... He can heal the waters and make them sweet. That's for our personal life. This is for the church. After Moses threw the tree into the water, and the waters were healed and made sweet, just two verses over, the scripture says that they arrived at a place called Elam. And he looked up, and there were palm trees. There was an oasis. Read it, Brother David, those last two scriptures. No, 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 no. Exodus. It says that they came to Elam. Uh -huh. There were twelve wells of water. Twelve wells of water. Listen. And three. Just a, just a few moments ago, they were at bitter water. They were at a place of complaining. They were at a place of struggle. And just a little ways over. Just a little ways over. Where twelve wells of water. What else? And three score and ten palm trees. That means sixty palm trees. Out of nowhere they came to an oasis. A flourishing place. Just a little ways over. In church, that's what I feel for us as a body. God's taking us through this journey through this wilderness and we're, we're arriving at bitter places here and there. But just a little ways over is that oasis that we're looking for. I know we've heard it a thousand times already, but I'm going to say it again. Just hold on. Hold on a little bit longer. That oasis is around the corner. Come on, let's pray. Every eye is closed right now. Lord, I see the condition of the church. I see us, God, and how we've been up and we've been down. We, we, we've been on a high and then we've been distressed. We've had money and then we've had no money, Lord. You've given us raises and then you took it. God, we've been sick and then we've been whole. But oh God, through it all, through it all, Lord, let me trust in your word. Help me to remember just little ways over, God. And you will bring us to that location in which you have determined for us. And that's why the scripture says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts of goodness and peace, to give you an expected end. Not to hurt you, not to destroy you. Come on, you see how the word of God ministers to my soul. It ministers to me. It, it tells me how to think. It tells me how to feel. If we could just but get back into that word, then we can walk by our bitter places with victory. Amen. With our heads held high, knowing that in my bitter time, I trusted God. I didn't let go. I didn't quit. I didn't throw it all away. I didn't complain. But Lord, I trusted you and I held on. Come on, can we pray together right now? Just a few moments.
Jesus. Won't I turn you back now? 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 Cause I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait on you, Jesus. I'm gonna wait.